Hey everybody, Nick Knack here again for another video. Since E3 2011 showed us a lot of games and fall and winter are almost near a corner, I've decided to count down my top 10 most anticipated games for 2011's fall and winter lineup of game releases. And I tell you what, this was a very hard list for me to make because there are way too much games released that quarter and it took me a lot of thinking to choose what games should be on the list. Now to note, this list is compiled of new titles and not updated parts of games which pretty much was a hard decision for me to make. In other words, don't be expecting to see games like Star Fox 3D, Dirt Strike Online, Ico and Shadow of the Colossus Collection, and even Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, because they've been released how long ago? Now that that's out of the way, let's get this list started. Starting up my list at number 10 is The King of Fighters 13. As a guy who loves his fine games, didn't know I had to put my KOF on the list. Now sure, the KOF games haven't really gotten that much love in a long time, and 12 was pretty weak. And that's why it's at number 10 in the first place. But if we believe in SNK, there's a chance that 13 might deliver. Right now, I only saw a few tidbits of gameplay, but from what it looks like, the gameplay kicks ass as usual, and the addition of old and new characters to the game is awesome. Plus, it's only going to cost $50, and it's published by my favorite gaming company this gen, which is Atlas. And after finding that out, I'm super excited. Coming in at number 9 is Batman Arkham City. Now some of you are surprised and mad on why this is so low. Well, to be honest, I haven't played Arkham Asylum yet. The reason why is back then, I only got two next gen releases, Borderlands and Uncharted 2. Plus, I've been using my money on like past generation games like PS2, NES, but that's besides the point. Now, I've only seen a little gameplay of it, and that's the reason why me talking about this game will be pretty short, but from what I've seen so far, the gameplay was very promising, presentation has been always looking amazing, and the premise of the game sounds awesome. Man, do I feel like shit for not getting Asylum yet. Thank god it's a good price on Amazon now. Now for game number 8, I bet once many of you guys hear what it is, your blood will be boiling and hate comments will rise. The game I'm playing at the number 8 spot is Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Now many of you are like, Skyrim deserves to be number 1, you don't know shit about games, fuck you. Well, sorry people, as much as I enjoyed both Morrowind and Oblivion, I just thought they were way too much of a hassle to play. But enough of the shit, let's talk about how much we all know Skyrim is going to be Game of the Year, or one of them. Graphics look phenomenal, environment looks badass, and there really is not much to say anymore because we all know how Bethesda's RPGs are like. Sorry people getting lazy talking about this, but you already know how much the game is going to deliver. Okay, on to the next game. Number 7 will have to be Rage. Now I haven't really watched that much gameplay on it, and because of that, I might not be saying much for this game. But from what I've looked at so far, I'm pretty interested, and here are a couple of reasons why. Its genre is considered to be an FPS sandbox, set in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, and to me, it's pretty fresh for sandboxes compared to the same old cities and stuff. Besides that, the weapons are very badass, the gunplay looks nice, and I totally fucking love Doom and Borderlands. Overall, these features and stuff is the reason why it was one of E3's 2010's best, and despite not having interest earlier, because I was kinda against shooters of all sorts, I should just let go of my hatred for now and just look forward to this game, and I am. Making its way into number 6 is Deus Ex Human Revolution. Now unfortunately, I haven't played any of the Deus Ex games, 
and I didn't really follow human revolution until recently. But so far from what I've seen, I'm very interested. The stock looks like it's on the same level as something like Square and Cell. The gunplay seems nice by combining both first person and third person at times. The character looks badass. The gameplay not consisting of shooting people seems fun, like the character interactions and hacking. And overall, I just know this game is going to deliver. I mean, the first day of sex was the best PC game of its year, and with those reasons, it gains the number 6 spot on my countdown. For the number 5 spot, I gotta give it to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Now some of you are confused on why this isn't that high on the list. Let me explain. First of all, I am a big Zelda fan. I grew up playing Ocarina of Time, I own the Link to the Past on the GBA, and I know many Zelda related stuff by heart, like how to play Zelda's lullaby and how the theme song went. But as much as I love the series and its quality, I'm kinda wiped out of playing them. To be honest, I feel at times that the games kind of follow the same cycle of gameplay. Still, that doesn't stop me from having interest in the new game because Skyward Sword looks pretty damn good. Well, the new gadget Link will use, the graphics are a great blend of cell shading and the type of graphics used in Twilight Princess and how the motion controls will be used does look promising. I'll sure be looking forward to playing this game. Let's hope we finally get a release date. Coming in at number 4 is Resistance 3. Now many of you are pissed off at Sony and Resistance because of the online pass crap. But right now let's brush it aside. I've said in many videos that Insomniac is my favorite game developer of all time. And the Resistance series is my favorite FPS series this generation. I like it more on Halo. I like it more in Crisis, and I definitely like it more than those oversaturating franchises, Battlefield and Call of Duty. Now from what I've seen and from what I've read, the game is going back to its roots and what made the first game different than the majority of shooters by putting the health bar back and having the bass wheel of weapons again. Haha, take that competition, screw your regenerative health and two weapons at a time feature. Besides that, the single player is sounding as if it's going to kick ass as usual. I personally thought the Resistance games were awesome because their single player was always strong. Multiplayer looks alright, despite the features that were taken out. And the graphics look mad hot. It's just amazing how Insomniac improved on them. In conclusion, I'm looking forward to this game more than I will for Battlefield 3 and Modern Warfare 3 as my favorite shooter of the year. But it sucks that this game will be overshadowed by the competition. The game that makes it for my number 3 spot will have to be Kid Icarus Uprising. Now unfortunately, I'm kinda new to Kid Icarus games, but that doesn't mean I should be looking forward to Uprising. The trailers shown at Nintendo's E3 press conferences have made the game look so damn cool and a buy for me. The graphical power of the title is just simply amazing for a handheld game. Like they're on the same level as PS2 graphics, if that's a good thing to say. The gameplay kicks ass because it combines a rail shooter with a melee free-for-all type of battle game and the characters look so badass. I'm not really saying much more because I don't want to overhype myself. And besides, with a company like Nintendo, I know this game's gonna deliver and I sure can't wait to get my hands on it. Being the runner-up game at number 2 was Dark Souls. Now I've only played a few minutes of Demon Souls, but so far from what I've played, the game deserves all the love. Like many of the games listed, I've only seen a few tidbits of gameplay, and me talking about this game will be short, but from what I've heard and read, from software improved on it, so this won't be Demon's Souls as a multiplat, but this game is an actual new game with improvements like these. It's said to be more open world, the graphics improved by a little, there are said to be PvP and co-op, which I'm looking forward to, 
and the difficulty is more intense, which I'm totally excited for. You know what? After thinking about how much I'm excited for this game, I definitely should finish Demon Souls ASAP. Damn, my objectives are way too big. And at number one, topping off my list of my most anticipated games for fall and winter 2011, we have Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. I mean, what else is more say about the sequel to 2009's Game of the Year? Many are excited and many are amazed at how Naughty Dog upgrades the fuck out of the franchise. The story seems to have more amazing set pieces and seeing Nathan Drake conquer more dangerous obstacles is jaw-dropping. The combat seems to have improved plenty with all the ways you can melee attack your opponents and how Night Dog improved the multiplayer. I'm speechless at how they've powered up that shit. I can't say much more because I don't want to overhype myself, but you know how this game's gonna be. Enough said. So those are the games I'm looking forward to for the rest of 2011. I'd like to hear what games you guys are looking forward to for the rest of the year. So comment down below so I can see them. I always read my comments is why. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. Take it easy. And until next video.